Hello, I'm Lauren Purdy. Welcome to week three of our mission. The Salvation Army now operates in 108 countries. William and Catherine Booth's dream of spreading the gospel across the world has been realised. And yet there is still so much we can do. By the start of 1879, 81 corps were running throughout England. It was an exciting time. Outposts were established in the USA, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, France. A challenge of the Army's effectiveness came with a decision in 1882 to expand the mission to eastern countries. It was tough work, but the attitude of the soldiers shows just how dedicated they were to the cause. Hallelujah! I haven't been in bed since coming here, but sleep on the ground. My feet are swollen and ulcerated with the first week's work. But to see the happy faces of the converts makes up for everything. Sacrifice was never forced on people in the Salvation Army. It was a genuine response to God's call. In fact, many Salvationists went too far. In 1878, William Booth had to issue a general order against starvation because officers were so keen to give up all for the cause of Christ, they were starving themselves. Yeah. Sacrifice should be for a purpose, and our purpose, like the early Salvationists, is the spreading of the gospel into the entire world. Wow. I don't know about you, but I find it pretty difficult to leave my comfortable life and head out to the wilds to face danger and degradation. But here are these amazing Christians, filled with a passion for mission, doing just that. It was all well and good to send hundreds of missionaries to all points of the globe, but William Booth, being both a spiritual and practical man, knew they'd need support. So he rallied the troops, taking collections wherever he went. All the time. Wretched crowds are being fed and cared for. And best of all, souls are being saved. Our fighting ranks are being recruited on earth. And the triumphant hosts are growing in heaven. During one of these meetings, Commissioner John Carlton was deeply moved by Booth's appeal. Now John had already given his watch and many other possessions for the cause, so he was running out of things to give. But God saw his passion and inspired him with a plan that's now famous. By going without his pudding every day for a year, John calculated that he'd save about 50 shillings. William Booth thought it was a great idea, but he knew that asking people to give up something every day for an entire year was a bit tough. So he modified the plan. Nay, to advance to greater victories, we must have a bigger self-denial week than ever before. I'm sure we will. Come on, get to the self denial appeal. Come on, get to the self denial appeal. In the summer of 1886, the first self denial week was held and nearly £5,000 was raised. In the coming years, the amount doubled and trebled, and the idea was gradually introduced to every territory throughout the world. <laughs> <laughs> Your money is not only paying for food, infrastructure and services in third world countries, your money is giving the world's poorest, most desperate people access to Jesus through the work of the Salvation Army. You can make weekly deposits or simply have the money directly debited from your credit card. Whatever you do, we need to keep our mission alive. So seriously consider your gift and watch as God expands our army and turns the world upside down. Next week on our mission, we'll take you to a modern day mission in Sri Lanka and give you an insight on how your money is being spent. I'll see you then.